<laughs> so I, I've been doing it wrong all this time. Yes, you have. <laughs> all right. So how does this, uh, what do you call it? Climate, climate smart farming. Climate smart farming. Yes. How does that help me on my land? So climate smart farming is trying to help you as a farmer how you can adapt to the changes in climate uh, so that you can grow your crop and get the best that you can from your field. Uh, the research has been done, but it's also important for you as a farmer to do research on your area about what you need to grow in your area and how best you can grow it that will help you as well. And knowing also your soil type, uh, it will help you as well to grow the best that you can. <laughs> so, so you're saying I should build a, a laboratory on my farm, aren't it? <laughs> no, 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 you don't have to build a laboratory. All this research has, has already been done. So all the information we have it, we, I'll give it to you later, but it's, it's so important to know what to do and when to do it. There are certain days that needs to be kept. Mm. And I will show you on this iPad. The longest day of the year is always the 22nd of December. This never changes. The most important date for us as farmers is the 25th of November. This is the best date to plant maize to get a good crop. If you plant before this date, the plants can take advantage of the best growing conditions, the ideal amounts of sun and rainfall. If we plant after the 25th of November, we lose a huge part of our yield. This graph shows how much of our harvest we lose when we plant late. As you can see, you lose 120 kgs of grain per hectare for every day you plant late. Timeliness is so very important. So the important thing is you need to know, like with the change of climate, things are changing and seasons are sometimes unpredictable. You know, so it's very important for you to do research that will help you as well to adjust to the change of the climate. All right, but you are talking about this uh, 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 climate change. What is climate change? So climate change is uh, the changing of the temperatures on our globe. In some parts of the world, it's getting hotter and hotter. I'm sure last season we experienced a lot of high temperatures as well uh, that are starting to affect us. Uh, sometimes the rains come late uh, than expected. Sometimes we might have maybe heavy rains in the beginning of the season, but it just... Uh, less rain at the end of the season. So it's very important to make sure that everything else has been done on time to make use of that rain that you, you get as a farmer. What we do uh, as men, we're emitting a lot of greenhouse gases that are affecting our, our globe, like with our cars, or our industries. There is a lot of carbon dioxide that we are uh, emitting into the atmosphere, thereby causing our globe to warm up. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, you are talking about, uh, you said global, the whole world. Yeah. But how does all this affect Zimbabwe? Zimbabwe is still part of the same globe. Uh, so whatever happens in the rest of the world also affects us. So all those gases that are being emitted from our industry, from our cars, from our machinery, it's also heating up uh, the temperatures and our globe is getting warmer and warmer. You know, as a farmer, there are some things uh, that we need to change so that we can uh, adapt to the change of the, of the environment. Okay, but, but what is, I've heard this, uh, Anzichi, uh, CO3, CO, CO2. CO2, yeah. what, what is CO2? Yeah. So it's just the carbon dioxide that is being uh, uh, accumulated in the atmosphere. Now it's causing the temperatures to rise. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I heard about, you, you're talking about this Anz, Anz ozone layer. Yes. And, and I hear it's, it's causing... Um, a greenhouse effect. Yes. Yeah. Yes. W what is that greenhouse? I mean, are we all growing tomatoes? Or what? No, it's not yeah. uh, like a greenhouse, like what you understand, but the same principles on a greenhouse are the same principles that happens around our globe. That there's a layer, what we call the ozone layer, mm. that is supposed to emit the, the gases that we produce, mm. but now it's trapping those gases. Now they are just revolving around our globe and causing the temperatures to rise. <laughs> Yeah, but then <laughs> I'm just a farmer. I'm, I'm just a man. There's nothing I can do about that. Actually, there's something that you can do about it. We have developed a technique uh, called climate smart farming. Some people call it conservation agriculture. Mm -hmm. But the basic is, you know what, uh, in your field, how can you uh, do the best with what you have? 
So it consists of things like minimum soil disturbance. You're not going to plow everywhere in your field. I'm sure you've seen how bad plowing is. Mm. Also, putting a mulch cover in your field to protect your soil and to conserve your moisture as well. It is very important to do things at very high standards. Quality control is very important. And let me show you. In Foundations for Farming, we never plow. Rather, we make small holes to plant our seed in. Cover the seed with soil and ensure the soil is covered with mulch, which is a thick blanket of plant material. This means that water can travel slowly into the soil when it rains and can go much deeper. The soil will then keep moisture for much longer. The mulch reduces erosion and evaporation. Splash Demo In this demonstration, we are using two small identical plates of soil. The soil is loose as it would be if it were in a ploughed field. We cover one of the plates with a layer of mulch and then direct a strong jet of water at each plate in turn. What we see is an exaggerated effect of raindrops hitting the soil as they fall from the sky. On the exposed plate, there is a lot of soil disturbance as the soil and water is thrown out of the plate onto the paper beneath it. There is also a marked slumping or compaction evident where the water hit the soil. The other plate which had the mulch is very different and here we see how important it is to have a cover over our soil to protect it from this primary form of erosion. In order to achieve high standards, we need to pay attention to detail. It is the small things done together that make the biggest impact on improved yields. The precision of placement of planting stations, the depth of the holes we dig, the quantities of inputs we use, how many seeds we place in a hole, how deep we cover the seed, all add together to produce high standards. Pick a line along which you can place your baseline, such as a road, fence or tree line. You must ensure that this line runs across the slope and not down it. Keep the length of the baseline to less than 50 meters. Mark out the baseline by putting a peg at each end, then tie a piece of string from one peg to the other and pull it tight to form a straight line. Measure two meters width along the baseline and place a peg. Now go up the baseline away from your peg. When you reach between 10 and 50 meters, put down another peg. Measure two meters and place another peg. Now go back down to the original peg. The working area should now be a rectangle two meters wide and less than 50 meters long. We make sure that our right angles are correct by checking with the corner of a book or a piece of paper.